I'm Jenna with Stalls TV and welcome to The Craft Corner. Today we're going to be creating a boutique inspired design in Cricut Design Space. But we're not just going to stop there. We're going to be cutting out CAD Cut Glitter Flake on the Cricut and applying it to a Rabbit Skins onesie. Let's get started by bringing up Cricut Design Space. So I have the design that we're going to be creating already brought up into my Cricut Design Space. So I'm just going to be basically showing you how to recreate everything that I have made up on the screen right now. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to create this uh, punch out text in the shape of a pumpkin. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add my text and choose it and choose the font that I want it to be in. So I can go to my font selection here and I just want to look for something uh, that has a lot of denseness to it. So I'm just going to go with this Arial Black font and I'm going to unlock this so that I can move this around to however I want it to be. So I have the full ability to shape this and stretch it to whatever I want it to be. All right, so I'm gonna put that to the side and bring in an image of a pumpkin. So I just used uh, files that Cricut Design Space already offers. So I'm just gonna go up to the search bar and type in pumpkin. And I chose to use the first or second pumpkin that popped up here. So I'm just going to insert my image into my designer here. Okay, and I'm only going to work with one piece of this pumpkin so that I can get this text to get the uh, shape of what we're seeing here in this light green. Okay, so I'm going to select my pumpkin. You can see that it's showing up in two colors. So what I wanna do is ungroup those two colors and I can move this to find a full darker green behind that. So I'm going to click undo so that goes right back on top of that. What I want to do is get rid of the bottom piece of that darker green. So I'm going to select both of these colors, the light green and dark green by holding in my control key and clicking both images. And I'm going to choose the slice option. So that's basically going to punch out that dark green that was in the back. So I can move this now and now I don't have to worry about that being there. Okay, so I can just delete that with my delete key. All right, so what I wanna do is work with this light green color and get my text to be the shape of this. So I want to make sure that my text is on top. So I'm gonna move that by choosing move to front, not to forward. So. If you want your text to show up on top, make sure you go to the Arrange tab and go to Move to Front and click that option. All right, so I have this text. I want to unlock this and be able to move this to fit the size of this pumpkin. So I'm gonna start by putting it at the top piece and just dropping it all the way down, all right? And I wanna be able to adjust each letter in the word. So. What I'm going to do is ungroup each letter of the word so that I can move each piece to where I need it to be individually. So I'm going to click that unlock button again and adjust these to fit the size of the pumpkin where I need it to be. So this side of the pumpkin is dropped down lower. So I want my P to be a little bit smaller so that I can tell whenever I punch this through that that letter is actually a P. All right, so my U is good. I'm just going to adjust that slightly so that it's showing up evenly throughout. Want to adjust it just slightly. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with each letter.
so now that I have each letter of the text adjusted to where I want it to be to fit the size of the pumpkin, I'm going to select each piece and weld them together because I need them to be all grouped together. So I'm going to hold in my control key and select each letter. And now I can weld them all together. So because I'm going to be using the slice feature in order to get my pumpkin text to be the shape of an actual pumpkin, I need this to all be one piece. Okay, so by doing the weld feature, that's going to put them all together in one group. All right, so I'm going to select both pieces. So I have my green and my black text selected and I'm going to choose the slice feature. Okay, so that went ahead and punched through all my text through the pumpkin. So you can see that all coming up over here. So I'm going to choose this piece right here. This is a piece that I don't need, so I'm just gonna click the delete key on my keyboard there. And this is the green portion that I don't need, so I can delete that. And I also need to delete this as well. So I'm just left with my text. Now I want to point out that I did keep this piece because I want this to be able to drop right in there. Okay, so being able to just drop that in there really gives it the look of an actual pumpkin. Okay, so make sure whenever you're doing your slice option to get rid of the uh, first dark green image, you are keeping the top portion of that. So that will drop right in there and really complete the full look. Okay, so that's how we created our pumpkin. And everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. So we're just adding in all of our text and choosing a font. What I really wanted you to take away from this is the options that you have with this slice feature. So being able to create text to look like a certain shape is a really unique way uh, to really catch a consumer's eye. All right, so basically all we have to do now is just type in the rest of our fonts and just place them where we need it to be. Right, and you can choose whatever font you want. So here I use the Ashlands Alphabet in Skinny, but over here I use the chalkboard font. All right, so you can choose whatever you want it to be. You can make this whatever color you want it to be, whatever it, your preference is. Cricut Design Space offers a variety of fonts. Um, just be cautious of the pricing over here. So some you have to pay for, some you do not. And you can, you can completely customize this however you want it to by using that unlock feature. Now if I wanted these pieces to be closer together, I can go up to my letter spacing and decrease the amount of space in between each letter. So if I go over here to my layers, you can see that this text has one layer. Since I only want to cut this out in one color, I'm going to get rid of the second layer by highlighting that and clicking the delete key on my keyboard. All right, so I can go ahead and pick my color. So if I wanna use this same font for my next line of text, all I have to go and do is click duplicate and drop it below and just edit this text to be whatever I want. So we'll do patch and that will punch that in there for me. 
I'm going to unlock that, make it a little bigger, increase my letter spacing. And to get my arrows in here, all I did was go to images again and typed in arrow and selected an arrow from all of the following. So I used this one, so all I have to do is click that and choose insert image. This is a larger piece, so I'm just going to drop my width down that it makes it a little smaller and easier for me to adjust. All right, and I wanna unlock this to make it a little fatter so it's not so hard to weed. All right, and I'm gonna duplicate that and drop it in on the other side. And I want to flip that so that it is pointing inward. All right, so I just chose the flip option and selected flip horizontal. And all I did to get the polka dot pieces is insert shapes. I chose circle and I just sized that down and dropped it right below my text here. And then I just kept duplicating these until I got enough to go all the way across. And for this, I just placed them sporadically. Didn't use any type of lineup. Just wanted them to be placed on there randomly. I'm just going to duplicate a few more times to get enough in there. Now I'm going to select all those and weld them together. So just selecting the circles there so that they are all one piece. And then I can go ahead and choose my color for those. Change my color here. All right, and that is how easy it is to create custom boutique inspired artwork in the Cricut design space. Now that we have our design finished, I'm gonna go ahead and send the design to cut. I already have my glitter flake loaded in on the cutting mat, so I'm gonna go ahead and press go. I already have my heat printing pillow laid out on the platen, and I'm gonna be using that to avoid all of these thick seams on this onesie. Whenever I'm applying my HTV, I wanna make sure that I have a nice flat surface. So this pillow is gonna allow me to get a nice pressure on my transfer whenever I'm applying without these seams getting in the way. All right, so before I apply my transfers, I'm going to do a quick preheat to release any moisture or wrinkles in the fabric and also adjust my pressure since that pillow's in there. I know I'm at a good pressure now. My glitter flake applies in a medium pressure. So I'm going to start by uh, placing my first transfer on there. I'm just lining that up with uh, center of the collar and just about an inch down from the collar. And I'm going to cover with a cover sheet and just tack my first piece for two to three seconds. Being able to tack this for two to three seconds is gonna allow me to speed up my production time since I'm applying three different colors. And it's also going to help in the case of it shrinking under high heat. So whenever you're working with heat transfer vinyl, sometimes it tends to shrink if it is under that heat for a long period of time. So being able to tack that for just a few seconds is going to allow me to get a good registration without any shrinkage of my transfer. 
All right, so I'm going to apply my next piece, cover with a cover sheet, and tack that again for two to three seconds. Glitter Flake's a hot peel, so I can go ahead and peel my carrier back as soon as I tack it. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay in the next couple pieces of my design, making sure I'm staying center of my graphic here. And I wanna make sure whenever I'm placing the second piece, which is this uh, patch text here, that I am not letting the glitter flake overlap the um, carrier from my purple text there. Okay, so I am gonna cover with my cover sheet and apply this portion of my design for just two to three seconds. I can peel these carriers back and then I can go in with the last piece of my artwork here. Now, since we are applying the last couple pieces, I'm going to apply these for the full application, which is 10 to 15 seconds at 300 degrees. So now that everything is all lined up, I can go ahead and apply it. This will allow for all of the pieces that we tacked prior to this to get its full application and give us a durable transfer. So last step is to just peel the last pieces of my carrier and we have our completed custom onesie. Creating adorable boutique inspired artwork is easy when using Cricut Design Space. For more tips on artwork creation, visit StallsTV.com. I'm Jenna with Stalls TV, and thanks for joining me in the Craft Corner.